What is up everybody and welcome back to Tattoo Critiques, the place where you submit your tattoos and I break them down. And this week is all about artists, so I'm going to give you my honest opinion and hopefully some tips on what you can do to improve your own work. So let's get it. All right, the first tattoo submitted is from Dan V out of New York City. And Dan, you sent over this segmented head sculpture tattoo. I don't know if this is Zeus or one of those other old white men. They all look the same to me. But at first glance, this tattoo is pretty solid. And there's only a couple little areas that I think you could improve upon. The first one being all the outlines that are surrounding these pieces don't look very confident. They almost look sketched in. This thing would look a lot more clean had you used a one pass outline on all these parts. You could then use a mag to kind of hide those outlines and it would have a much more crisp appearance. The shades in the face are pretty great, but the hair looks a bit sloppy. You need to clean up that hair a bit and keep those details just as sharp as you have in the face. By using the same technique as we just talked about in the outlines, the same thing could be said for the hair. I think you just added a little too much dark shading in the hair and it's just not coming off as stone or marble. Because the face absolutely does look like stone. I just think you fell short when it comes to the hair. And I wish there were some more separation between the first and second segments because it just feels like one piece. Because I love the separation and skin tone that you have in the rest of the tattoo, I just wish the top part had that same feel. But not a bad tattoo by any means. These are just a couple things that caught my eye. But you did send over another tattoo, so let's check that out. So here we obviously have a black and gray heart grenade, and I love the three-dimensional feel this thing has, especially when it comes to those front left ridges. Ryan told me this thing looks like it has abs, and now I can't stop seeing it. I think the concept and the design of this tattoo you really nailed, and I love the contrast it has along with the black shading. You did a great job blending the anatomical heart with the grenade, which is a task in itself, and it looks like a real object. However, similar to the last one, I do think you can improve on your lines a little. They're just not coming off that confident. The edges when it comes to the top of the grenade and the top of the heart just lack strength. It feels like, to me anyway, that you're scared to put those lines where there's going to be little to no shading, because the lines at the bottom of the grenade are solid. If you could bring that same line weight from the bottom of the grenade to the top of the grenade and that little part of the heart, you would just really elevate this tattoo that much more. Because it is a good tattoo. Try to be more confident when it comes to those scary areas and you're going to see a huge improvement in your work. All that to say is, I think you're killing it. These are excellent tattoos. Just a few minor tweaks here and there and I think you'll be a lot happier. But thank you so much Dan for sending those over. Alright, the next tattoos are sent in from Osni out of Belize. And Osni, you say you've been tattooing six years as a side job and you could really use some help when it comes to packing colors, more specifically yellows and oranges. But the shark that you sent over is covered in a bandage, so I can't really tell what's going on there. When it comes to the yellow, it does look green, but that's what you get when you add those blue reflections into yellow. You're gonna end up with green. From what I know, when packing in yellows, you gotta go kinda slow, because yellow can be a tough color when you're packing it in wall to wall, so you really gotta make sure you're putting in the time. But from what I can tell, it looks like your color saturation is there, albeit some parts are a bit messy, but it does look saturated. What I'd really like to talk about are those black and gray shades, and that shark. More specifically, those teeth. What happened? I know shark's teeth are supposed to be scary, but yikes. I honestly think your color packing is better than your black and gray shading, because your tones really aren't smooth or cohesive in any way, and everything on the top part of this tattoo is just blotchy. But as I did mention, there's a wrap on this tattoo, which makes it very hard to judge, so next time try to send in a tattoo that's not covered. Especially when it comes to your portfolio, nobody wants to see that. But you did send in another tattoo, so let's check that out. Alright, this next tattoo you sent over looks pretty good, but I know I've seen this on the profile of Jason James, and it looks like you copied it line for line. This is definitely something we don't condone. Even if somebody brings you a tattoo that they want exactly like that, you gotta change it up a bit. You don't want to rip off somebody else's artwork. Chances are they just like that style, so you've got some room to play with it. And remember, a copy tattoo is never going to be as good as the original. That being said, let's talk about some of the technical parts of this tattoo, because I can clearly see this one a lot better. Your black and gray shading is definitely improved when it comes to this tattoo, as everything's a lot more legible and clean. I like how you use the liner when it comes to the shadows around the separation of the nose and up toward the eye. I can appreciate the attempt at wood grain up in the handle, although it does feel a little light, like I'm not sure how long that's going to stick around for, but there is a good use of line weights throughout the tattoo which does add to the contrast. We couldn't really tell how your outlines looked on the first tattoo, it being realistic and covered in wrap, but these outlines don't look that bad. I'm not going to call them great, because there's a couple areas that are thicker than others, or you maybe double past some lines, making them thicker than they should be. And one thing I don't like about this tattoo at all is the smoke. It just looks very weak and there's not much to it. But no matter how good any of this looks, again, it's never going to look as good as the original. I mean, just look at the smoke on the original tattoo. It looks far better and actually looks like smoke. Same thing could be said with the wood grain in the handle on the original. 
that's gonna stick around and stand the test of time. All these things in the original are intentional because that's their style. You've got to find your style. I do wanna say it's fine as a newer tattooer to experiment and test the waters a little, but don't send it in to me to critique and don't claim it as your own work. Always give credit where credit is due because it's very hard to find your style when you're just copying others. You can imitate, but don't steal. When compared to the first one, which we could barely see, looks a lot better. It just leaves a little sour taste in my mouth. And the whole comment about it being a side job. I mean, what even is that? It just hurts my heart a little. All right, up next we've got four-year tattooer Alexis Holder, and Alexis, you asked for an honest critique, which is in fact the whole premise of the show because I personally know how hard it can be to get a honest critique out of your coworkers. Everybody just wants to kiss your balls telling you what you wanna hear. But that doesn't help me, and I know that doesn't help anybody else either. So let's break this thing down and see what we can do. My first impressions are this is a pretty solid tattoo. It looks great from a distance. And although this is a fairly common design, I've seen a handful of them in my career, it does look like you put your own spin on it. And I can appreciate that. I do like the contrast of techniques you have. You've got some hat shading in some areas and mag shading in others. However, when it comes to the application of the hat shading, you could definitely use some improvement. For one, the spacing is all over the place. It definitely needs to be more uniform. I'm more a fan of the tight lines like on this upper left side of the face rather than the more open lines on the right side of the face. There are some gaps here and there that just make it feel like you rushed through those areas. This is the one area where you should have taken the most time because they have to be near perfect. Because every little discrepancy is gonna catch your eye. And two, not all the angles are the same. They look similar when it comes to the left and right, but if you look at the bottom, they're definitely a lot more up and down. If all these lines were at the same angle, again, it would have looked a lot more clean. Your eyes would have been drawn to those areas that they're supposed to be drawn to, like the eyes and nose. As it sits, our eyes are drawn to those flaws because they have become magnified. When it comes to the eyes, the irises definitely come off as flat tires because they aren't circles by any means. And I'm not sure if that was the point, I just don't like them. I just don't know of any eyes that have that shape. You just gotta make them round, it'll look a lot better. And while we're on the eyes, the glares in those eyes just make them look really far apart. And I think that's because you decided to put them on opposite sides when in reality they should be on the same side. One other thing that I'm not really a huge fan of are those eyebrows. It just looks like she needs to tame those caterpillars. They're just coming off stringy at the end and that probably could have been fixed with a little bit of mag shading. When it comes to the whites on the stars in the face, I think those are fine. But as far as the stars on the outside of the face, I think those dots are a bit unnecessary. They're not really doing anything for the tattoo. If you're gonna put them in there, put them all the way in there. If you want me to be honest with you, Alexis, at four years in, I think your stuff should be a bit tighter because these are some issues that I see on my Apprentice episodes. You always gotta remember your fundamentals no matter how far you are into your career because it's a great design, but keeping these details tight is really what's gonna sell this tattoo. But once again, thank you, Alexis, so much for sending that over. All right, guys, let's take a quick break and talk about some of the stuff that I use on the daily. If you haven't heard or you're just new to the channel, make sure you check out Mad Rabbit. They've got everything you need for during your tattoo from beginning to end. They've got glides to sunscreen, even body wash to help your tattoos look happy and healthy. So head on over to madrabbit.com and make sure to use code PONY20 to save 20% off of your entire order. All right, let's get back to it. All right, the next tattoo submitted is from Peter M. out of Scotland. And Peter, he sent over this red rose with a little bit of lace on the bottom. All right, at first glance, this tattoo is very striking. I think you did an excellent job when it comes to that red rose. However, I've got some worries when it comes to the lace. The lines in this section in particular are a bit too bold and too close together, and it makes me really nervous about how this tattoo is gonna look in 10 years. We can see in the reference behind the tattoo that the lines in this area are a lot thinner and there's a lot more open space allowing it room to breathe. That even if this were to blur over time, you're still gonna be able to see that skin tone shining through. Through. There's an old saying that people like to toss around that goes, bold will hold, but bold will also blow out and turn black. So it's not always a great thing. Sometimes thinner is better. That's what she said. <laughs> And that's especially true in a tattoo like this, where you have so many lines that are so close together and there's a lot of black. You always wanna make sure that you set your tattoos up to age well. Not only do you want them to look good on day one, but you also want them to look good on day 5,895. I think that's 14 years by my calculations. Close enough. I hate to keep harping on all this black, but if the black areas were more delicate, I do think that those red areas would be popping off a lot more. Because I do think it did a great job when it comes to the rose and the gem, but it all starts to bleed together, especially when it comes to the dark edges of those reds. Speaking of the reds and that gem in particular, something I like to do when I make my gems are use gray wash outlines. It really helps separate all those tones and keeps everything nice and clean for years to come. Like this ring pop tattoo I did recently. I know it's hard to tell, but there's gray wash outlines separating each and every individual shade in this thing. It's gonna keep those colors packed in there for a long time. 
And lace, similar to the last tattoo we saw, is something you really have to take your time on. Make sure you set up a good stencil and really send it home. Otherwise, it's just gonna fall short. But I do think your color realism is great. I do wish I could see that gem a bit more. Unfortunately, it blends a little bit too much in with the background. So I'm pretty confident that you can pull off some solid tattoos. You just wanna make sure you put in the time where it belongs. Thank you so much, Peter, for sending that over. All right, the next artist up is Nate Leslie out of Seattle, Washington, who's been tattooing 13 years. And Nate, you sent over a few tattoos, the first one being this clever little dinosaur. And this, my friends, is how you make a solid tattoo. Everything is clean and legible, you don't have to ask any questions, and it just makes me happy. Let's start with the line weights. This is exactly what proper line weight technique looks like. You've got some thicker outlines around every object in this tattoo, as well as some thinner lines adding additional detail like on the inside of the dinosaur, the flowers, and on the hand. The thicker outlines keep everything separated, while those smaller lines just add a lot of interest. It seems basic, but you have no idea how many people avoid this. These are the fundamentals that I preach about every episode. You have to tattooify images if you want them to stick around forever. The color choices in this tattoo is something else I want to touch on, because they're all working in harmony and it keeps this whole thing balanced. You've got that golden yellow at the top that works well with the orange on bottom, you've got the pink on the right as well as the pink in the nails on the left, and you've got that teal blue shining through that hits the tops of the fingers and it just looks so good together. And even though this is pretty basic lettering on that little dinosaur card, it's done so well, and again, you have no idea how many times I've seen people slack on the lettering and it just makes everything fall apart. If you're gonna put any kind of text in a tattoo, you really gotta nail it. Your tattoo is only as good as your lettering because that's what you're gonna look at first. But that was the first one. Let's check out this other tattoo you sent in. This little blackbird surrounded by colorful flowers and some leaves. Again, another solid tattoo. You can clearly tell Nate has his style. One thing that immediately catches my eye are these leaves. A lot of times you'll see artists add leaves to a tattoo and they're generally pretty boring and they don't have any character. So it's refreshing to see something that can end up so basic look so cool. And again, these colors just play so well off each other. That bright, vivid orange works so beautifully with that yellow on the left-hand side. And even that ombre in the yellow flower itself, chef's kiss. And even the fade that's happening in those flowers, the solid red at the bottom, to the red-orange on the right, to the orange-yellow, just looks so smooth. And when we look at that wing, I love how you changed up the tones in there, not keeping them all black or all gray, but adding some nice highlights and shadows with those tones, as well as changing up those shapes. Again, it just keeps things interesting. And just like with the last tattoo, you've mastered those line weights where you use those thicker outlines around all the important parts and use those thinner lines on the details, like in the chin of the bird and around the eye. Take a look at those white highlights that he put in the wing. They're put in there with confidence. They're not put in there half-assed and second-guessed. I mean, this thing is just solid all around. But let's take a quick peek at one other tattoo you sent in. And that's this cow tattoo, or bull. I don't know, somebody's gonna correct me in the comments. Uh, Pony, that's not a cow or a bull. That's a Yeti from the upper region of Amsterdam. I got the message. But either way, same thing could be said about this one as the other two. It's just solid all around. You've got the line weights, you've got the saturation, you've got the flow that's happening all around that cow's face. And again, you managed to keep that balance using similar colors on the top and the bottom against those browns in the middle, and even that red just pops a bit more because of it. And I really gotta say, I love those little whiskers on the face and chin. You just nailed it. So, I don't know if I've done this before. I mean, you guys already know who my favorite's gonna be. But not only that, I want to make him my featured artist of the week as well. I think his work is absolutely worth being featured, and not just my favorite of the week. Going through his Instagram, I see a lot of the same qualities, picture after picture, not only of the tattoos that he sent in, but his entire portfolio. This is what 13 years should look like. Consistency. Finding what works and replicating that tattoo after tattoo. I would bet money that he's got a solid game plan on paper before heading into the actual tattoo. And knowing what colors work well with each other is just something that comes with time and experience. So Nate, once again, congratulations on not only being my favorite artist of the week, but my featured artist as well. And everybody else, make sure you head on over to his Instagram page, give him a follow, and let him know I sent you. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and thank you to all the artists who submitted their work this week. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here, and as always, I will see you guys next week.